Welcome all. Now we would be discussing about a tool of Thali Developer 9 that is the Dictionary Manager. So the topics we would be covering under this is the introduction, dictionary creation process, operations that are available in Dictionary Manager and finally generating a dictionary or uh, releasing a dictionary. As you are aware, Tally ERP 9 provides you the flexibility to view uh, your data in one language, uh, enter another language, and print another language. So, Tally ERP 9 supports a multilingual feature. Uh, the default functionality of the Tally product is extended by TDL, and you can create a very and there are various language dictionaries available for this. However, the new strings that uh, developers create, the customized files, there, are, there could be certain strings that are not available in default. And these strings will not get uh, translated automatically. These strings has to be present in the dictionary manner, in the dictionaries of the language folder. So the primary purpose to provide this tool is to extend the multilingual capability for the customized files also. However, apart from that, you can also create your own language dictionary. For example, in default Tali, we have languages like Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati, Bengali, Kannada, Mayadyaryam, Tamil, uh, then Arabic. These are the default languages available in default tally. Apart from this, if there are certain dictionaries that you would like to create, for that you will require this tool. So it provides the capability to search for strings, translate them, and then finally generate a dictionary file so uh, this tool will allow you uh, will have has features like distributing strings to translators creating some reference dictionaries importing st uh, strings from various uh, places so there are a number of utilities that we have of this particular tool uh, where do you get this tool you do not uh, require a separate installation of this tool as you are a developer uh, and understanding is you would have installed Tali Developer 9. So this is a tool of Tali Developer 9. Hence, uh, this particular tool will get installed with Tali Developer 9 and would be available in the same folder. You do not require to buy a separate license for this tool again. The license will be read from your Tali Developer 9. The base dictionaries with the strings are also available of the, the base dictionaries. The, uh, say as we were just talking about that you can create your own dictionary language uh, based on the language that is not available in default tally. For that you can use the existing default uh, base dictionaries. So along with your Tally Developer 9, we have also provided you three base dictionaries that is Tally based on DCI, Tally Intel that is based on DCI and Stat based on DCI. These three base dictionaries are made available and these are the uh, default, diction uh, default base dictionaries of the strings that are available in Tally ERP 9. Uh, how do we la uh, launch this uh, particular tool? One, you can launch it from the Tally Developer. That is, you click on Tools and you click on Dictionary Manager. Or you can directly double click on this uh, icon of Dictionary Manager from your Tally Developer application folder. So, we'll just open the Tally Developer application folder. This is the icon of the Dictionary Manager tool or the application and you click on it and it is opened. 
this is how it looks like when you open. All the files are closed right now. How do I create a base dictionary? If you are creating a new language, then you don't have to create a base dictionary. Uh, but we are starting from a base process where we understand that you would be creating a new dictionary, a new base dictionary. So that would be of your customized files. So we have two customized files available here. Uh, this is one and this is two. These are the two files available. So how do I create this? Is very simple. So the process is the base dictionary first. So that would be a dictionary which only has the strings. Then we have the working dictionary which has the base strings and another uh, column where you can provide your language string and finally your output file. So this is the process you have to follow. So how do I create? First of all the base dictionary for tally ERP9 is available. So let me show you that. Uh, this is your tally developer 9 folder. This are the three base files we have made available. Tally base, tally international base, and tally sta and the stat base.dci. So let me just open and show you this file. Open a DCI file, and uh, this is one of the file. So this is how the base string file looks like. So there are around fourteen thousand. That's it. Fourteen thousand six forty six strings to be translated for your international then we have tally base which is 17,000 strings and we have stat base which is again having 2,564 strings and there are certain hints provided right so we'll close this and now we will create our own base dictionary Click on File, New, Base Dictionary. This Base Dictionary will be of our own customized files. The name of the product is TSPLTDL. We've provided a version 1.0. Given a file name as DCI name, the DCI name is TDL. Uh, where will these DCI files reside? So I have given the folder path. Files that have to be read, the extension, because there are n number of files we'll have .da, .tdl, .txt, .dll, n number of files. Why would we run through all those files? So we'll just go through the .txt files probably, or add the max.tdl files. That's the max files we can we would go through. Where is this? Uh, which file should it? Which path should it look? So we have given this path. In case there is a path that you would like to exclude, you can add a path that you would like to exclude. That could be a subfolder that exists within this folder. Whatever process you require. In case you want to include, do not provide any exclude path. Uh, can we give multiple paths? Yes, you can add multiple paths. And you click on create base dictionary created successfully the files that has been processed and now we open our base dictionary tdl.dc here it is you see uh, for few columns we have hint and for few columns we don't have it precisely we have a hint only for one column and for rest we don't have a hint so how do we know for i mean for what is this one how does the dictionary know what to pick for strings two how does this hint appear because this hint isn't appearing for 
all the text. One, the files that contain the strings prefixed with the function dollar dollar local string will be a part of your dictionary based string. So if you notice dollar dollar locally string. So this is a part of my is this is there for my part dollar dollar locally string is it there? Yes it's there. Then simple accounting yes it's there you see all those that are prefixed with dollar dollar locally string uh, let me just open this in totally developer for better vision here you see this all the text are prefixed with dollar dollar locally string but how for particular string we are getting a hint and not for others for these we aren't getting so what is that special about this string you notice there are three semicolons right before the text three semicolons together indicates that it has to be a hint for this see for this we have given two correct so for this we have given two hence there is no hint for this we have given three notice this in the code so for that hint is available so three semicolons is for the hint that you require for your text rest everything will be considered to be a comment so if you need this you have to give three semicolons two semicolons it will be comment it will be assumed to be a comment so this is our base dictionary very simple to create so this is what we have c now coming to working dictionary. Base dictionary is only just for generation of the strings. Now for which language you would like to create? For which language you would like to create this? Uh, well, we'll create it for a Hindi language. So we go to file, new, work dictionary. Now the name of the dictionary, so we'll say Hindi TDL, project name we'll keep it as Hindi TDL, language we will select Hindi, uh, saving it at this and where is the base dictionary, uh, the base dictionary name is tdl.dci, so we'll just browse the file, it's here, tdl. So we just browse the base dictionary file tdl.dci and we say create. Dictionary created successfully. Uh, first, we, I'll just show you the folder. You will see there is a file called hindi tdl.dcw. Now, what is this message? Obviously, you have selected a language, so you need the keyboard of that language. Since the language isn't enabled here, it is prompting to ask you whether you would like to open a Hindi keyboard layout, that is a system keyboard for your Hindi language, or you do not want the keyboard. So if you are well comfortable with using the system keyboard, say yes. And if you are do not want to enable it, say no. What 
would happen if I say no? How am I going to translate this? Obviously, you can't type here because it starts typing in English. One, either you can use the system keyboard. Two, you can make use of the phonetic keyboard of Tally. This is the phonetic keyboard of Tally that you can make use of. So, uh, the phonetic keyboard is the pronunciations that you use. What you speak is what you have to type. So, now for address. Now, address uh, in uh, Hindi is called Pata. So, write pa ta. This is how it writes in Hindi. Now, actually the words that I have typed is pa ta. This is what I had typed in English. When I enable the phonetic keyboard, the same words P A T A A gives me the word in Hindi. This is how it works, the phonetic keyboard. This phonetic keyboard is the capability similar to what we have in Tally. Now say for contact person, Vyakti. Uh, or say Naam, name is Naam, so how do I write here, Naam, and what if I have to write in, so I have written Naam, this is what I have written in English, and this is when the keyboard is on, this is what happens, how do I know keyboard is on or off, here is the indicator. Right, so this is how it works. Say for certain letters like ch, this how do you know how to write this, or probably. How to write this right so there are certain letters uh, how to give a bindi how to give a matra how do you know this how to type this so for help of using utility of the phonetic words the pronunciations in help reference dictionary manager multilingual capabilities uh, keyboard language configurations here we have provided the keyboard combination so if you go to Hindi keyboard combinations you will see the keyboard combinations and the character that it will type so for U it is U and for U it is W or capital U then for A it is AI for A it is small E. So how you pronounce for k, k, g, g, t, t. So for everything we have provided the combination here. For vowels also we have provided for Chandra Bindi you require. Say I want to write O. So it's a O. Capital U. So it goes as capital U, capital N, M. How have I how we have written this? Let me show you in English. Capital U dot capital N small m. This is how it has been written. So if you aren't very well uh, versed with this, you can use this. Well, for our own, we have a special character. You can write O M, capital O M, right? For Chandra Bindi, what you can use for uh, dot, what you can use for the half length under the. So there are characters that we have. You can make use of those characters.
So this is how the working dictionary gets generated. And this is how you can work on it. Now, one, you can, uh, if there are just limited number of strings, you can do the entire translation by yourself. But when it comes to, as you would have already seen, uh, when it comes to a huge uh, list, like for example, the base dictionary of default tally that we saw, it's a huge list, right? It is highly impossible for you to do the entire translation yourself. Just impossible, right? So what do we do for this? Uh, well, uh, we will not do the entire translations by ourselves, but we would distribute these strings. So we can have a team of people doing translations for us. So you can do the translation by yourself, you can distribute it, after distributing you can import it, you can mark them, uh, whatever as per your requirement, you can search what you want in working dictionary, you can filter and you can make use of the reference dictionary. Once the working dictionary is completed, you will see there is an additional columns that get added here, the additional column of Hindi product we had seen and assigned to is what has got added now assigned to will be you cannot tie uh, assigned to here uh, can be to any person you can provide you can provide the person's name or the other way if you can do an automate uh, distribution of string translation also so what we can do is uh, either you can mention the names here directly say Gopal, Radha, Gopal, Gopal, Radha. You can type out the names of, uh, of the people directly here or the other way around you can do is you can go to tools, distribute strings for translation, Radha, Gopal, oops, let's see, it is, uh, the count of the strings are only those strings that are not translated, it's not giving 7, the total is 5, because the rest two have got translated, and we can click on assign, well these are default, well I can, we can change the assign, we can say 3 for uh, Radha, and two for Gopal, or you can say one for Gopal. So there would be one string which would not get assigned to anybody. Now, and you can say assign. You see, one string hasn't got assigned to anybody. Translated strings have uh, aren't assigned, and this one string because the count did not match, the last string is what is left out, and this is what you will have to do a translation all by yourself. The it's not assigned to anybody. Now, when we these assignings are done, the file gets generated, the working dictionary name the person name, the date and the time this file has got generated. So Radha and Gopal. So now we just open Radha's file. So now Radha has contact person, daily transactions, facts and these three translations to do. So we'll say facts. So this is facts and
Now, Radha has done one translation and say, she says it should not be pata and it should be say some other word like uh, this address refers to say not, uh, Radha tries to change the translation from pata to say tha tha. See, there's some translation change here, okay. Now, the translation has been completed say, for the, by the translators. Translations has been redistributed and trans file has gone to the translators. And now we receive the translated files. Right? We have seen this. Now, this is what we have said, importing the strings. The translated file has to uh, reopen to the uh, has to get the translated one has to get pulled to the original uh, working dictionary right so we'll say tools import now what is the source so first we'll try to pull from Radha now we'll say all strings first we'll say uh, one by one we'll see the difference of each of this uh, options we have for translation we have all translated and only translation see when I click on all you notice this now addresses come twice and uh, this is a conflict now we know that this is correct and this is wrong and uh, this is being done by whom so we can just select this and say delete the row so the bad translation the conflict is gone uh, we'll try to do another change import translated string and uh, before we do this we'll make some changes at uh, gopal's file You can write the whole thing or the way you want. Okay, and then now we open the original file. Now we try to import tools, import source. We'll take Gopal's file and we say transla translated string. Only that translated string has got imported. So all means all the strings including the non-translated strings will get imported. So this will double up these number of strings. Translated strings import only the strings that are translated. And only translation means only the translation is imported. And if there are new strings added to it will not be imported. Trust source, so while we were importing, please ensure, do you see this asterisk mark? That means the file is not saved. So every time you do perform an op operation, please ensure you press Ctrl S to save your file. So while we were importing, there was an option to say trust source. Now, uh, all the strings that we create do not uh, get flushed to your DCT until and unless they are marked as published you see this green mark until as this green mark is not there on a string it is not considered to be sent to your dot dct file say for example uh, this person has already uh, she has already done a translation marked it as for published do you trust the source uh, if you click a tick on that, the source has marked it as published, it will be considered as published. So you do not have to do it. So that's how the trust source works.
and you say okay this is one of the thing now say uh, there's a spelling error in english and you don't know where is this uh, say now this there was no hint now i don't know where is ta this daily transactions used so i say click tool tag as hint required i need a hint for this so unless i do not have a hint i cannot work on it so give you need a hint on this so it will be a purple flag now say uh, there is a string that cannot be translated say it's an uh, it's a stat uh, annexure 4 now annexure 4 uh, the word annexure 4 cannot be translated it's a stat uh, annexure and it has to be as it is so what you can do is click here tools and say track as not translatable you cannot translate your annexure 4 title it's an extra for it's an extra for so you can mark it as not translated uh, translatable so you see the counts we have here we have conflicts we have bad translations now uh, then say for example so you what you have to do is you have to click here and you have to select the option now what's a bad translation now say for example uh, this you have given as and you give percent s that's a bad translation why because this main string does not have any such character and you have provided that character so it has a special meaning so if you provide that it will give you an, a mark as bad translation so you can mark it as hint required you can mark it as non translatable you, there are something that uh, bad translations for something that is has a spelling error or something like that conflicts when uh, two english strings have uh, different uh, one english string have different translations so when we check when we saw from rather the address was something that was happening now address is somehow got deleted from here so what we'll do is tool import my source is radha i trust the source and i say import See, we have some text for not. See this? We have two strings that are not translatable. So, what do we do this? And we can also say, uh, we can bring this back and say, say we done it by mistake. So, remove tag. And now, you remove this and it's back. To your non translated okay to publish published so uh, now what will happen if you haven't marked it as green this will not get flushed to your dct so now see there are th hundreds of uh, things to be marked as published you can say tools publish all so whichever are translated will get published You can look for words. Now say it's a huge list and you want to see for accounting what we have used. So you can check this. 
So there are some previous translations you can view here. You can, again this is a drop down box, you can select, now see you are looking for Radha, assigned to Radha. So that can be fetched here. Say looking out for a particular product list, you say 1.0, so you give 2.0, it's not this, you filter out. So we have options. Filtrations, conflicts, published, assigned, not assigned, translated, bad translation, published, not translatable, hint required. So we have a number of uh, filtrations available and you will see that the green and the red banners, the green and the blue banners, the blue is translated and the green are the one which are published. creating a reference dictionary again this is like would be like your personal diary you can use single uh, this one create a reference for single words so you can say file open reference so by default what it will do is all the words which are single you see address is single word so address is fetched here name is a single word it's fetched here fax is fetched here address is fetched here okay so this is an address that has got fetched twice so this is one which we don't need it's a bad translation so what do we do is first tools remove publish tag and here i can say tag as bad translation so this will be now we'll open the reference again and we can remove this Now I want to add one, select for person. Vyakti. So you can also add to your references. then the dictionary reference dictionary is created a dot dcr file gets created in your language so there will be a folder in your tally developer so By default, dictionary tool creates a file with the language name and dot extension. The reference file will be is available in the ref folder. There is a ref, there would be a ref folder in your tally developer folder. You can add string, you can add the translation word, you can search for strings, you can edit the required strings. Now, very important thing uh, that we need to understand is why are we doing this entire process so that we can give to certain customers and obviously there are commercials related to this so what can we do is you can connect it to a particular serial number you can uh, link it to a particular serial number how do i uh, link it to a particular serial number is edit dictionary properties how can you uh, the way you can compile a tcp file for a particular serial number a dct file can also be compiled for a particular serial number so how do we do that is uh, here is your file name your author name, say it's a TSPL, 
authorization required and you tick the serial number and say OK. Now you will say tool release dictionary. Save it at uh, you provide a location. Say OK. And OK. Now the DCT is generated. This DCT has to be copied to your tally folder language folder here. Has to be copied here. Now when you open your tally. So first let me execute this part of the code. We have uh, done translation for uh, Pata, right? So we'll execute this. Pata is in this particular TDM. Right. Uh, now we'll just change language to Hindi. You see, the one which we have changed are available. So all the published strings are trans the translated and published strings comes to your DCT and you can compile it for a particular serial number that can be done through edit dictionary properties. Here we have the option for dictionary properties. You select the serial number and say OK and you generate uh, save the file and you can see tools and you see release dictionary the file gets released. And then you can copy paste that file to the tally developer, uh, sorry, tally ERP9's lang folder, and it is ready for operation. So this is the steps to create a dictionary file. And you OK, the file is generated, copy the file, and you can push it back to the uh, tally language folder. Uh, well, the encryption format has been changed from release 2.0 onwards. So in case you are trying to compile a file for a customer using the release less than tally ERP 2.0, then you will have to click on generate in old format, else you don't need the tick mark. Right? Okay. And the folder file is copied and we just saw the working of this DCT file. So thank you so much. Uh, for further queries, please do write to our support desk, support.tallydeveloper at tallysolutions.com. Thank you and have a nice day.